Hello, everybody, and this is a special listening quiz on jazz. You know, uh, the second half of the program, I start to give you a little bit more of how I would interpret certain things. You know, I've asked you a lot of open-ended questions. Many of them are, are challenging. Uh, get your opinion on things. Talk about describing music in musical ways. Uh, dissonance versus consonance. So I kind of throw you to the wolves in the first few uh, uh, weeks of the course just to kind of flush out what do you know what do you understand and literally the thing that people have the most uh, uh, challenge with is really describing the music itself without all the extraneous stuff we talked about uh, how many times you'll say I like it I don't like it it makes me feel this way these are all descriptions of an audience component remember we have the composer performer and audience and so one time I had you uh, try and describe the composition as a composer would. For example, I believe the video project where uh, you had three different scores that were composed for a running scene of three men. And that they get you thinking differently. Well, today what I'm going to do, we've started off with this particular week involves the uh, exposition of how jazz started and particularly the, uh, the biggest name in all of jazz that because of what he did, how he played, how he launched it, that was Louis Armstrong. You saw some good cuts of him. Now I'm going to give you an overview of some jazz greats and explain to you what's going on. And first I'd like to show you one of my favorite large bands, big bands, by a, a, a band by the name of Count Basie's band. And Count Basie is the piano player. This is a, a Kansas City-based organization. Count Basie from, and there is a style of Kansas City jazz. He's kind of the epitome of that. And uh, what I want you to look in the video, I'm going to, do, I'm going to cut up the song a little bit and make comments so you can kind of see how a musician would comment on it. In the beginning of this song, you're going to see Basie at the piano. He's got a whole bunch of horns over there. You'll see him. They're just kind of sitting there, bobbing their head. The one guy, the second trumpet on the end, particularly. He's, they feel the groove of swing. This is swing jazz, you know, and uh, the key components are the guitar player. Now, this is the kind of guitar player. His name is Freddie Green. He doesn't play like any other guitar player you've heard in the rock band. His job back in the big band days was strictly to keep time. Ching, 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 ching. You watch him. All he does is play one chord after the other, and he, and he only plays the swing rhythm. Ching, ching, ka -ching. The other thing you should know as a terminology is what they call a walking bass. A walking bass is means that this bass player will play downbeat notes as if someone is walking forward, making a motion forward. That's a key element of swing. He never stops playing that downbeat. He'll either play four notes in a row in, in, in a measure or two. So sometimes a bass player will, and a drummer will play in four, where they're where they're actually swinging in four, and and at that point the drummer plays on the right on the hi hats. We talked about that in my drum set or the cymbal, and both the drummer and the bass player are a machine who are moving this train forward. Okay, sometimes you'll hear the bass player he'll shift to what they call in two. Two means you'll play on the first note, first beat, and the third beat of the measure. Now the hi-hats, the two symbols that the drummer has, they come together and imitate the clapping of the hands that I'm doing. And the drummer will play more of a two-feel, they call it. Now, they'll do that to the first part of this song. Eventually, you'll hear them go into a swing when you hear that bass player go, boom, boom, doom, 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 doom. And every single note is being played. And the drummer goes to the ride symbol, but he changes the field. Knowing the field between two and four. Mm. Uh. One, two, one, two, oh, one, two, three, four, whatever it be. What's going on in the minds of the musicians, however, is that the moving train, the forward four is still being forward. The swing is still felt. If I did this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, that has no jazz feel. But I'm doing, uh, three, it's, a, uh, uh, it's that early anticipated beat. Once in a while you hear the bass player going, boom, 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 
Doom, 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 boom, 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 boom. That's just to move it forward. So know that, that and then the guitar player, ching, 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 ching. That's the rhythm section right there, along with the piano player. Now, the piano is a hybrid instrument, remember. It's half percussion, half string. So sometimes it will play, he will play chords. Count Basie is the leader of the band. He's a piano player, very common. So was Duke Ellington. He plays, he'll play chords and he's playing an introduction, <clears throat> very light. The band hasn't even played yet. You're going to see the drummer, Sonny Payne, who is one of the greatest jazz drummers ever in big band world and played for Count Basie and laid down the Count Basie style. He's crazy because he'll play like real quiet, kind of cool. And then all of a sudden, the horns are come in, and they slam something really big. It's shocking. That is a basic thing, man. They start real easy, basic, playing a little thing. All of a sudden, basically give them a little eyeball like this, or give them a finger, not even give them a cue. And that band, they go, wham! And a really loud, loud. And if you've ever sat in front of a really professional, top, loud band, uh, a band that hits like that, live, some pros, it's quite a wall of sound. Let's check out this first segment, and I think you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. So the bassy style, style real cool and smooth, but the groove is always there. Now let's see what happens next. Out comes a trombone section. First trombone, next trombone, another trombone. And they're all making up this solo in their head as they go along, as they play. One answers, do -do -lay -do -lay -do -do -do. they start making up things. One guy will play, the next guy will play, the next guy will play. You'll notice they have what they call mutes or plungers in the other hand while they're playing trombone like this right they got a it's basically a toilet plunger right it's it's used by the pros it's a toilet plunger look at it you got another kind of mute and there's a, a trumpet mute straight mute they are adding that western african flavor that guttural sounds remember i told you the the, the, the classical singers would never sing this way, they're like, la, 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 no. And yet, it, it, it sounds of Africa stirred up with the jazz and gumbo. They're distorting that thing on purpose. They're finding notes in between. The guttural sound. It's more like a speaking. It's hard to say. Are the trombones arguing? Or are they just like three men playing cards saying, yeah, man, that guy, boom. You know, it's a, it's a conversation, right? The conversation that went and Marcellus talked about. Exit the trombones, here come all four trumpets. They also have mutes. Different kinds of mutes. The Harmon mute, they call it. It's a metal one. And they got another one, it's a straight mute. They got another one, a cut mute. They pull it in and out. You'll see guys playing, sorry, playing this. And they'll pull that mute. 
uh, in and out of the bell where that sound is coming out at the end of the horn. And listen to the tone quality changes. That's what we know is tone quality. Now, as all this is going on, look in the background and you see this bass player is not quitting. Hmm. <clears throat> He's got to drive that train. you got to move it. And neither is Sonny Payne, the drummer, who plays what I call a real stiff swing. Stiff nugget, still grooves, but it's pointed. That's kind of a loose swing, they call it. A loose swing. This is a tight jazz swing, a, ba a bassy trademark. The guitar player, once in a while, you'll see this guy with his leg crossed, just playing his own guitar, laying down the tempo. He lays down the tempo. That guy, by the way, the guitar player, arranges a lot of bassy stuff over the years and uh, is a writer. And he's kind of the boss of the band. Now, bass is the leader, but bass is a star. Bass comes in, but the man who sets up rehearsals, makes sure the guy's got it all together, everything, that's the guitar player. Interesting that he has such a, what appears to be a minor role. Then you're going to start to hear a little bit of growth in the sound, volume-wise. You know, when the trumpets are up there, all of a sudden the trombones start kicking in with their bells off, a little with the mutes out a little louder. You're going to see Sonny Payne get a little more animated. <coughs> jam it in there once in a while you know it's like a fight's brewing it's almost like if you remember the the, the michael jackson uh, video beat it they did it with film then the build-up to that whole fight right uh, the same idea but it's a slow growth and then finally sunny pain and then they all the bands got the mutes off they're playing wide open swing hard on this blues tune and then they stop and Basie puts his trademark on the ending. This is a Basie trademark. You'll see his hand on the piano go, ding, 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 and then the last note. The other thing, as you get into it, keep an eye. Basie can hardly be heard. And then he gives a signal on the high notes of his right hand. Oh, you'll see. Uh, I, too bad I can't point to it in the video. You'll see that. That's a signal to the guys, okay, we're going to build this now. Build this to the end. A lot of signals. Basie cup calls the shots. Because you don't know how long those trumpet solos are going to go. They may go on for a long time. They may be short. Okay. Uh, in this case, he's got them coming out. It's going to be, the trombone's going to be featured there, right? Saxophone stays seated. The other times he's featured saxophone. So try and follow what's going on musically here. And it's going to be a build to the end. Notice this groove of the rhythm section. Guitar, bass, drum. Bass, drums, and piano. And the horns then have the freedom to ride that train. But they're feeling it too. Oh yeah. Once in a while you'll see some look of another one. Like, okay, you gonna play now? Whatever. All that. That's the communication that goes on. That's the collaboration. The chords don't change. The melody's in their head, but now they're taken off with an improv thing. This is a very, very, very West African trait. Goes back to the same when the whole village come together and add their two cents and, and all, all could sing out and all could take a spot for themselves. Yet there's timing involved. There's chords involved, all right? So let's watch Basie take it out, and then we'll look at another star.
Could I tell you one of the funnest things as a drummer is to set that stuff up? You know, on my big band that I play with, we play these kind of styles, a lot of bassy tunes. But it's like you're driving a semi truck when you're playing drums or bass and behind the band, you know, see him kick it in. And he's got, listen to that tempo. Did you ever feel uncomfortable? That tempo, that groove is going through the whole tune. In the background, the saxophones for the longest, they're not even featured, but for the. They sit around and they go. They're just adding a little rhythm in the chord structures, what they're doing. All right. Did you see basically the way he cut them off? Big smile. He just puts his hands on the piano, band stops. Okay. Drummer hits a hard, hard hit when the band goes. Boom! Done. Okay. Now you're looking at one of the greatest uh, jazz bands of all time. Legendary. It is uh, Mozart, Beethoven, and all wrapped into one in jazz. These are highly accomplished musicians. And this is 1962. Less than a hundred years away from the Civil War. They didn't even start playing jazz until Louis Armstrong that showed up 40 years later. That's in one person's lifetime that New Orleans sound went from that thing you heard in the beginning of the videos to here. Now I'm going to show you another fantastic person. The greatest female jazz singer of all time to this day still. She has a four octave range. She can sing blues, gospel, jazz. She also is an imitator of what they call improvisation. When a trumpet player plays like they were doing, making up their own stuff, which we know comes from West Africa now, Ella Fitzgerald, the singer you're about to see, uh, does that with her voice. And they call that scat. S-C-A-T. What is it when a jazz singer sings nonsense syllables? In other words, sings without words to imitate a horn. That's what I just did, scat. That's, it came and goes back to Armstrong. But I mean, every jazz player understands what that is. What's the bee do? I don't know. That's the imitation of the, the horn. That's a trumpet, you know, the sound. Imitating it. It just comes out of your head when you've done it as long as I have. Um, you can tell, too, like if you have see like a high school jazz band and trying to do scat, you know, doobie 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 wobba doob They just don't got it, you know. You can't, you can't do, you can't you can't do it on paper. A lot of jazz groups, college, high school, they try and, you know, okay, I'm going to be Ella Fitzgerald now. This particular tune features, a, she's in Denmark in 1964. Listen how beautiful her pitches are. There's no mistake on pitches with Ella ever. She's absolutely perfectly in tune. If you put that, vibe, that, uh, that remember that frequency thing we did? And we told her to sing, if we told her to sing A440, she'd be right on it, perfect every time. She'll sing through the song just like a song, Lullaby of Broadway. Lullaby of Broadway, you do bodo. It's a song that was written. Oh, heck, it wasn't for a show. It was written about a, a famous jazz club in New York City called Birdland. Name it for Charlie Bird. Don't worry about that. But she sings really high, singing really low. Any singer you listen to, that, I don't care who it is, the biggest star of the world. Okay? Uh, female. They know who the queen is. They, you know, Aretha, yeah. But it, Aretha's does not have the same style. She'd be the, the, the queen of souls, certainly. But Aretha learned from Ella. You know, and Ella has a gift in her voice because she has such a fantastic structure to her voice, God given, that makes her sound, it could be as sweet as a little girl sound or big old manly sound at the bottom. She's just got it. she got that. She actually a, a, was a, uh, wanted to be a professional dancer. And when she was a young child, I think she was born in 1920, I don't remember, 17. She died in 07, I think. She went to the Apollo Theater to dance. She was kind of a tall gangly, and, and she got booed off the stage. But the production guy felt sad for it and said, do you know anything else? Well, was I can sing. You know, she, she, she didn't get booed off. I mean, they didn't like her very at all. And they brought her back. They said, well, you want to try something else. Why don't you try singing a song? So she sang a song, and she was like a hit. And that was like she was discovered. Uh, fantastic. Ella Fitzgerald, the best female jazz singer of all time. Ready? Here goes. Now 
So now you've heard Ella sing a nice little song. Now we're going to see her in the studio, and you're going to hear that scat. It's an interesting <clears throat> uh, video. It's an old video. Of course, she's died for some time. You'll see she has real thick glasses now. She's losing her sight. She's uh, in her 60s. Uh, she had diabetes. She ended up having to have uh, amputations of her legs, if you know anything about that disease, as she got older. And... Um, she got a little time left in this video, but look at the age on her, and then look, look, watch her take control of this band. She's running the show. She's running the show. And uh, she goes through and talks about how she likes all kinds of music, classical, I think she called it Soul Train music, because I think the date here is the 70s somewhere. And she talked about the different styles of jazz. She mentions Cal Basie. She mentions Duke Ellington etc. Then she even does a little spoof on country. She, and, the, and the rhythm section changes their groove, you know, to match what she's saying. And then she goes into a song called It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Swing. And this is a classical, classic jazz tune that was written, I guess you might say somewhat of a parody, but it is a standard. Now let me tell you what a, a standard is. A jazz, there's jazz standards. A standard is a song that has been recorded many, many times that is usually comes out of Tin Pan Alley, uh, the entertainment area, but it's done in a jazz way. And, you know, I can think when I was like, I don't know, 17, and somebody called out a tune like uh, Stormy Monday or something, and they'd say, what is this? Well, this is an old blues. And then they'd call something else out. And then they'd come up with something like uh, Lullaby of Broadway, and I never heard the song before, the one you heard earlier. And I'd say, what kind of tune is this? And the old trumpet players turn around and say, it's just a standard. It's going to have a basic format to it. A basic jazz song format. Verse, verse, chorus, verse. Just like the Dead Van Allen people would write it. And so remember that as we get into pop music next week, in the, the beginnings of post-World War II pop music, how the form of a song, the organization of a song becomes standardized. And we'll track that eventually to the end of the course, and you'll see how nearly every song today that is in the pop world is standardized, okay? Meaning um, there's not much difference between them. We'll talk about that later. But anyway, you need to watch Ella run the show here somewhere in the 70s, and uh, you will hear her scat. You'll see what I mean by her playing the trump, playing her voice. As good as Louis Armstrong can play the trumpet, you follow what I'm saying? So that level of artistry. The two people we've shown you are artists. She is definitely an artist, as much as anybody would be in, in, in the music business. And we have them today, too.
Here's Ella, last one for Ella, then we'll go on to the final cut of One More Star. <laughs> another piano player here. Count Basie's a piano player, but he's a band leader. Um, played a lot of piano when he was young. But now we're going to listen to the greatest eh, modern jazz piano player, uh, at least through, that lived through my time. I think there's a name called Art Tatum that you'll hear about at the end. I'm going to play Oscar Peterson first, and it's a unique concert. Think of about this is where the jazz, where jazz becomes art. Okay, 
this is as complicated as any Tchaikovsky piano concerto with a big orchestra. But it's the American art form. This is why I'm leading to show you. This is not a pop tune. This is not la-di-da. This is not playing lullaby of Broadway even on the piano. I mean, this is highly technical, number one. Very hard to do. Number two, keep in mind that Oscar Peterson is making up the melodies he plays on the spot with his right hand. And the rhythms are interchanging. The bass player is following Oscar, Nils Pedersen, uh, from Denmark. Um, and, and Martin Drew from England is playing the drums. Three great musicians. Oscar Peterson's greatest bass player was Nils Pedersen. He had a guy by the name of Ray Brown for years. I'm showing you this because it's technically hard. It's also, the melody is so complicated, and it's made up, it's improvised. Think about that. And so, you know, here you have Oscar Peterson from Montreal, Canada. By the way, he speaks French and English. You have Nels Peterson from the Netherlands, Denmark, and you have Martin Drew from England. And so I make the point because jazz is a global international language global international and you know what started off is somebody trying to make up a song you know the history now you've watched the video this is kind of the quintessential there are thousands of other people i could cover you know great trumpet players great saxophone players oh there's a ton of those all with unbelievable creative powers as an improvisational person performer but this is a little more visual. You can kind of see how hard it is if you play any kind of piano at all. And if you haven't heard, I've played you Basie, Ella Fitzgerald, Oscar Peterson. To me, this Basie's band is the quintessential swing band. That Ella definitely the best jazz singer that I've ever seen and most people say is the best ever. Same with Oscar Peterson. But at the end of the Oscar Peterson uh, videos, and there's two songs. The first song, you think it's going pretty fast. Do 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 you play? Wow, he's playing. And then it cuts to another tune. It will be right back to back where he's doubling the tempo. I mean, he's just taking off. Really fast. I just want to show you how how ripping this guy is. And he played and recorded around the world for sixty years before he died. This is probably in the ooh, late 70s, early 80s, something like that, based on his age, what he looks like. Maybe, maybe 80s. And so Oscar Peterson with his trio. It's called a jazz trio. Here's a question on the test. What is a jazz trio? It's basically the rhythm section taken out of the big bands without the guitar. Piano, bass, and drums. That's the core of swing in any big band situation. In any band. I've played many, many jazz trios. If you have a jazz quartet, you have piano, bass, drums, and guitar. That's the rhythm section right there, right? And so that's the core of the swing. They are playing swing music. Ooh, that feel, all right? Not funky. You know, it's not straight up, in the pocket, a lot of flexibility. Watch the great technique and how fast the bass player can play, how grooving hard the drummer is, and how unbelievably both hands flying up that piano in different directions, different notes. I don't know how the man can even perceive it up here. And then at the end, I'll show you a guy by the name of Art Tatum, who Oscar Peterson says is the greatest piano player to ever live. And he was playing in the cl jazz clubs in the 20s. And only the piano players, the jazz piano players of the world, know him as well as the world might know Michael Jackson, because Art Tatum was not train and he was blind and you'll catch a little bit of rare rare film of him at the end and oscar peterson says this is the man that influenced him so that's our trio of jazz greats i'll do a little bit more of this in some as we get into the other venues you know the other styles of music rock and what have you start giving you some commentary and at the end of this video you'll see your assignment if there's one attached to the video
watching that make my fingers hurt. But he's not done. Let's add the drums and bass and drive this thing. You'll see in one part of the clip where he's playing along, and you notice the guys are like sweating. This is back in 64, maybe. Well, probably wasn't any air in this auditorium. And while he's playing all these licks on his right hand, licks is a term that jazz people use for a lot of fast little notes, um, or a quick kind of bunch of notes, he picks up a blue cloth and wipes his brow and puts it back down. Don't miss a beat. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Anyway, here's a little bit more happens when you add the drums and they're listening to him and just trying to push that train, as I say. So the listening quiz associated with this is number one. Count Basie, describe five things about a big band, just explained by me in the Count Basie video, that you did not know about that were new to you. Second question, describe only the singing melody in, of Ella Fitzgerald. Give me five things that describes what she can do or what she does with her singing style. That'll be challenging. It'll be challenging. But remember, you can't tell me how it makes you feel. You can't tell me, you know, if you like it or not. What happens melodically when she sings? What what does she do? And the last one, Oscar Peterson. I'd like you to describe to me three things that you learned about watching this person play at this high level that maybe you had not thought about before. You can include in that a comparison to any music that you think was really hard to play that you've heard before. In other words, a virtuoso performance. Take any performance you want. 
and compare what Oscar Peterson can do technically and with his mind and complexity to that. That might help you describe kind of three impressions. Now, there's no right or wrong answer here. But don't just give me, he plays fast, you know, he sweats a lot. <laughs> don't miss somebody. Give me some thoughts on it. Five things about big band jazz you learned. And five things about the way Mel, uh, Ella Fitzgerald's melody sounds to you, what she does with the melody, the way she sings. And lastly, three things about Oscar Peterson. One of them is a comparison to his highly technical ability compared to somebody else that you thought was like the most rippinous player, best performer you'd ever seen. Now, they can be the same, they can be equal on a different instrument. But just think about somebody you thought was, or a performance or an individual that you saw was just fantastic. And then just to compare it to Oscar Peterson. It, it needs to be more than just that he's better or he's worse or whatever. Give me something that maybe he's particularly good at that the other person is not. All right. A little complicated, but we're getting into the world of how a musician thinks. Good luck with that.